You take those two right turns, and when they make the final turn, you can begin to hear the crowd and the noise of the open end of the stadium. Here it is, the most exciting 25 seconds in college football. You heard it from Mr. Musburger, the most exciting 25 seconds in college football to the most exciting 25 minutes in college football podcasting. That's right, it's another midweek episode of the Two Right Turns podcast, so let's take two right turns er, er, into this episode. Today I have with me Sammy Brown, ACC Linebacker of the Week and ACC Freshman of the Week, and with him is another freshman uh, who might be just nicknamed Sports Center Top 10, Ashton Hampton, number 23, uh, in your programs and on the field, gentlemen. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, thank you. It's great to, Happy be, here. to be here. Well, gentlemen, you both are coming off an incredible performance, and uh, we've just wrapped up the first three quarters of the season. Um, so I wanted to kind of tap in and see how the freshman year campaign has gone for both of you. Mr. Brown, you find yourself in a room with a lot of veteran leadership, Barrett Carter, Wade Woodass, and recently this season, national champion Ben Bulware. What's something that you've learned from the leaders in your room that's helped you prepare to perform so early in your career? I think the biggest thing that I've learned is just kind of how to transition from high school to college because they've been here for so long. They know like the habits that a college football player should have, you know, in their in their sleep and their studying and their and their training, just all that. Just being able to transition from high school to college has been really easy with those guys in front of me. And so you're just coming off of your first start. Uh, of the season, what's something that was kind of different in your mentality and your preparation going into this game? Honestly, there wasn't really anything different about my mentality. My mentality every week is just, it's the next game. It's the most important game. So I prepared like I would for any other game. And Mr. Hampton, uh, you know, this is probably the most snaps you played all year. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, coming mm -hmm. into this game. And I want to, before we get into some of the plays you played at corner, I wanted to ask you about something that happened early in the game, the opening kickoff. <laughs> Some might say there was a little extracurricular activity on the sideline there. And what I really want to ask you is, for, as a young player, how do you temper the emotions of that opening kickoff, that first play, uh, to get through the entirety of a three-and-a-half-hour uh, game? To me, football is just fun. Like, it's just it's nothing to really think about. I'm just out there reacting, having fun, playing my coverages, trusting my technique. And I'm just trying to weather all the emotions throughout the game can't get too high, can't get too low. If a good play happens, you got to forget about it. You got a next play mentality regardless of what happens. So, yeah, that's really all it is to it. With a next play mentality, that's a good transition to some of the plays I want to talk about here today. Um, but before we get into <laughs> the top 10 uh, play on SportsCenter, uh, what led to that was, you know, a big play by the other team. And as a corner, you know, you're often on an island. Mm -hmm. You're often out there, you know, you're man to man. You got to go beat the guy in front of you. Uh, so you give up a big play. How do you reset and get ready for the next play and just flush that so quickly? At the end of the day, he on scholarship too. So if he gonna make a play, I gotta come back and make a play right after him, and that's what I did. So I can't really, I can't dwell on one play too long, especially at corner. Because if you dwell on one play, it's gonna affect you throughout the rest of the game. Because imagine that would happen in the first quarter, and I'm just soaking the whole game. Then I'm not gonna be trusting my technique. I'm not gonna be locked in and focused. I just gotta keep playing. Cause at the end of the day, it's a 60 minute game, and that's only maybe 10 seconds of, out of 60 minutes. So, Is that a mindset you feel like you've learned from folks that are around here, kind of in your room, A.V., J. Lou, some of the folks that have been playing uh, earlier in the year? Yeah, they've, they've, they've pretty much been like just great teammates to me. They've, they've always had anything I, anything I need. If I'm asking a question, I could ask them, I could trust them. They'll always lead me in, in the right direction. And if I'm ever confused on anything, that's who I'll go to. If, if I can't ask Coach Reed, I'll ask Coach Turner. And there's always making sure I'm disciplined and staying consistent. All right. So let's get into what we really want to talk about here, which is this play that I can't open the internet and see anything else. So so tell me, tell me what you're seeing. So you're reaching your left hand back, some mm -hmm. saying blindly. Did you see the ball or are you just reacting to the What's player? The call? I, at first I seen the ball late because at first I was chest to chest. And then when I looked back, the ball wasn't close enough. So then I turned back to the inside to find the ball. And then when I seen the ball coming, at first I was going for the pass breakup. So when I reached my left hand back, the ball got like stuck between us. So I started like squeezing, I like brought in, I, I brought the ball with my, with my left hand into my chest. And after I got it to my chest, I brought it back to my right hand and I just ran to the sideline. Hold on, cause you did not run to the sideline. You ran straight ran, to midfield. I ran to <laughs> midfield first. And then at first I, I was gonna take my helmet off. I was like, nah, I can't get no penalty. Cause uh, Shut had did that early in the year and Coach Sweeney was, 
He ain't like that. Yeah, well, they say the wise learn from others. So that's yeah. a good lesson that you picked up early so on. I started running down first, and then I went to the sideline, stood on the beaches a little bit, and then, yeah. Getting hype. And it seemed like, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, it seemed like the defense came out this game with a little more swagger, a little bit more dance in the step, just a little bit more confidence. Uh, what it, what was it like going into this game on the defensive side uh, in practice in some of the meetings? I think it was just a mentality like, that was the most fun game that I played in this year, just as far as, you know, we were having fun, we were flying around, we were playing really hard. So I think it was just a mentality of we were going to go in and we were going to do what we wanted to do. To me, that game kind of like, for me personally, it felt like I was playing high school football again. Like I'm out there having fun, smiling after every play. I'm talk talking trash. I'm having fun with my teammates. Like, it just, it just felt like being a little kid out there again. That game, that was probably my favorite game this year. What y'all think of Virginia Tech's fourth quarter video? I kind of liked it. I thought it was pretty cool because the whole stadium was getting into it. Cause like, it make you want to shout. I, I like that. It was cool to me. Everybody in the stadium was like juiced up when it came on. And I, I, I kind of like turned up to it a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I love, I love the song. And yeah, every time they say shout, that horse on a treadmill pops up. And I don't really understand where it comes from or what it means, but it gets the crowd going. Well, I saw the Rizzler, and that's all you need in a fourth quarter video. So. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him too. I was like, I just turned my head. Can you all explain that to me? What that is? I don't. I, it's pers- just some random kid. He's hanging out with some random family. Like they're not even related, and they made a song. Yeah, I, I don't really know. Who. I seen him like he was at like a Knicks game, I think, or something like that. I didn't know who he was, so I seen him there. But I don't really know much about him. He seemed like a cool kid though. <laughs> some swag, I guess. Yeah, he got swag. Yeah, yeah he must. <laughs> He's everywhere. Jimmy Fallon. I didn't uh, even know that. But that's how it goes. Yeah, no, I, yeah, whatever resonates. If it means something to you in the fourth quarter video, then it's getting people going. Yeah. It got me hype. For sure. Definitely got D Mac hype. I don't know if you saw him. <laughs> nah, D D-, D Mac was third. He was popping off for sure. Um, you know, and that was good to see. Like I said, the, from the coaches on down, just felt like that defensive side was moving and grooving all night long uh, in Lane Stadium. But you didn't get a chance to see any of the inner Sandman stuff? Nah, that, I was kind of mad about that because, like, I be seeing it on TikTok and it, it be looking hard on TikTok. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe maybe we go up before and then we we'll get to see it. But nah, by the time we got out there, they were already out there. I was like, damn, we missed it. I could hear it like when we were walking out, like in the locker room. Like I could hear like the rumble and just the faint enter Sandman. What's what's the biggest crowd you ever played in before coming to college or played in front of? State championship my uh junior year. That was, that was a pretty big crowd. Yeah, it was lit. It was yeah, it was nice. It was nice. It was loud. I remember I scored a touchdown. It got real loud then. Yeah. We oh. lost, though, sadly. Dang, man. Lost the overtime. Mm. It's M- tough. My sophomore year, we played Gunnar Stockton, who's one of the quarterbacks at Georgia, and there were like 10,000 people there. It was a lo- It was like the first game of the year. Really? Like, I don't know why there were so many people there. I guess it was almost, it was kind of like a rivalry, like us in Raven County. There's a lot of kids that know a lot of kids from Raven County, so it was already a big game. And there were a lot of really good people, like, on both sides. So there were a bunch of people there. So is this, this is probably one of the bigger uh, road games that you've been to, road mm-hmm. environments, where everyone shows up and they're all hoping you lose. They're all cheering against you. And that sideline's real tight, and they're right <laughs> on top of you. Uh, what's that? What was that like? You know, coming into an environment like that and trying to turn them off. I thought it was fun because it was one guy in the stand. He was heckling us the whole game. All the corners, <laughs> we would just turn around like laughing at him, like just making jokes. So I thought it was funny. We were just having fun out there, to be honest. Well, I turned around one time, and I saw Michael Michael Myers, and then I saw a dude with a football on his head, like a football mask. Let me see that. <laughs> Yeah, you never know what you're gonna see when you turn around, man. You get your eyes on the on the field, or you turn around, you can see anything, uh, and that's exactly what they're looking for uh, in that moment. But they did a good job; they stayed most of the game. Yeah. So, Ashton, I asked you a little bit about kind of being out on an island. You know, a lot of times you're in one-on-one situations. Sammy, a lot of the opportunities as a linebacker gets created by some of the guys up front, mm-hmm. right? You got to have a lot of guys doing their job which open up opportunities for you to come in and make a play. And I think we have an example of that. <laughs> well, first of all, this is set up by Coach Goodwin. He called the play to begin with, but I got to give props to the left tackle. I mean, he was a really he, – he set me up perfectly. I couldn't really get a good rush on him, so I just kept contained, and I saw the quarterback flush out of the pocket and just shot my shot. Now, Sammy, in preparation for this episode, I asked a lot of folks what I should ask you about, and two things came up hunting and fishing. 
So in your experience as a hunter and a fisher, what have you taken from those hobbies that apply to hunting down that quarterback? I think the biggest thing that you can learn from hunting and fishing is just patience. And I think that's a good example right here. Like, I didn't get a good rush on the tackle, so I was just patient. I stayed in my gap. I kept my kept my leverage on the quarterback, and it ended up going my way. You know, whenever you make a great play, it's always important to understand what that great celebration is like. So what inspired this kind of resurgence of the dab? Honestly, I have no idea where this conversation started from, but we talked about it Friday night at dinner. Like, what if we just got up and dabbed after we got after we got a big play? I think we're just bringing back 2016 like dances, like hit the folks, whip nay nay. I mean, I don't know because everyone jumped I don't in. Have that. Everyone I, I jumped in with you. They knew exactly what they were doing. Uh, it was really well choreographed, uh, and it looks like you've been studying some tape because we do have a throwback to another you know, big time Clemson dabbing experience here uh, from 2015. <laughs> How would you rate Ashton? What do you think his uh, his performance rates here? I give him, I give him an eight. An eight? Yeah, On a I scale of one eight. to swag, you're giving him an eight? <laughs> yeah, I give him an eight. All right, all it was, right. It was, it was all right. I like it, I like it. Uh, Cause I mean, yeah, that was, that was the height of the dab, 2015, 2016, you brought it right back to 2024. Um, Ashton, you know, it's also really important, I think, whenever a big play gets made on the defensive side, especially with DBs, to know what the celebration is. Do you guys talk with teammates or plan this out earlier in the week, what you're going to do if big plays happen? Yeah. Sometimes we'll either – because I remember when Jay Luka got his uh, interception Stanford game, he did the seatbelt celebration, but it was – it was like – it was a seatbelt celebration, but it was the seatbelt celebration. You're like, he did it with no swag. He did it with no swag. <laughs> he did it with no swag. Oh, no, he Jay Luka, we got to get on him for that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's cool, though. Cause, but usually early in the week we'll talk about something we might want to do. But, yeah. Now, one of the things that you kind of saw as we zoomed in on the sideline after your play, Ashton, uh, you know, we got a lot of FaceTime, obviously, with the camera. Zoom in on the eye black. It says, me versus me. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about that mentality and where that comes from, and is that something that you change up each week, or has that been consistent all year? Usually, I change it up each week. It just depends on how I'm feeling before the game. But me versus me is basically like, because because Coach Sweeney talks about that you have to hold yourself accountable, and every day when you wake up in the morning, you gotta look at yourself in the mirror, and it's really you versus you because you can't compare yourself to anybody else. At the end of the day, it's the man in the mirror. And Sammy, what is what is your? Are you putting a lot of eye black on? Are you putting a lot of you know face uh, makeup on, as you will? pregame bro i don't have any like i don't have any drip no i didn't wear i didn't start wearing gloves until junior year like before that i was just like jersey pants cleats and helmet and that was it would you argue gloves are drip or functional both both yeah definitely both you know i'm gonna throw back a little bit in my my uh countdown here um because we've seen a lot of one-handed plays over the course of the last several years in clemson football and so i wanted sammy to give us an opinion on, you know, how would you rate Ashton's one-handed interception with some of the one-handed plays we've seen over the years? Uh, so this first one here uh, was Georgia Tech last year, military appreciation, Tyler Brown. Um, you know, offensive side of the ball, scoring a touchdown. Where do you think it ranks in, in comparison to Mr. Brown? I think Ashton's is better. I okay. mean, that's like an OBJ catch if you if you really look at it. Like, But, like, Ashton's was, like, different because he was, like, out here compared to up here, like, he didn't even know where the ball was. Right. He's, he's just instinctual. So let's compare it to a defensive play. Now we're going to flash back to Virginia. Uh, Andrew Booth uh, several years ago. You know, he's reaching back. It's a similar Odell play. What do you see in here in comparison to Mr. Hampton? See, this is different because it's kind of like outside of his body. It's like kind of more out here. But I still think Ashton's is better. Ashton might be top three. Because he's got to fight through a body. Yeah. So let's right, compare right. it now to another Sports Center top ten play, this time from Hamp Green. Uh, captain of Clemson football uh, against Charleston, Charleston Southern. Just rising up, going up, and getting it. That's a solid play. That's a solid play. But with his, he like he didn't catch it. He, he, yeah, it. he didn't grip it he the first time. It, he yeah, he it tipped it into his hands. Yeah, if he would have caught it the first time like that, that would have been legit. different. That would have been different. I got you. But so, to me, uh, Booth, his, his was nice too. Yeah, he solid. went up like this. Yeah. Receiver was on his uh, body, chest to chest. He went up and got that. I like that one. I, I won't, it must be that 2-3. Right. It's Some, definitely that 2-3. It two, three. It's some of that 2-3. Something about that 2-3. I like it. Uh, <laughs> now, both of you guys, you know, you have a lot in common. You're playing defense. You're t- both freshmen. But you also uh, grew up with coaches in the house, right? Both of your uh, fathers are football coaches, one at the high school, one at the collegiate level. What's something that you've learned in that 
uh, experience growing up around ball, not just as a player, but, you know, as a coach's son. You got to stay disciplined. You got to always be consistent. Because at the end of the day, if you're not consistent, it's like, if you're not consistent, the, the coaches can't rely on you and they, and they can't trust you. And, and if the coaches can't trust you, then they can't play you. If you can't play, you're going to be on the sideline. And nobody wants to be on the sideline at the end of the day. Everybody wants to be on the field, living out their dreams and having fun. And being disciplined, it's just, it just comes with the right mentality. If you're a disciplined, you got to make sure that you have the right mentality and that you're always going to think about doing the right thing even when no one's watching and make sure you're never cheating yourself or your teammates. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with that. But, like, at the end of the day, it's really just a mindset, like, the idea that you're just going to go out there and you're going to do it and you're going to do it to the best of your ability and whatever happens, happens. But if you're doing it to the best of your ability, sometimes, most of the times it'll go your way. Do they ever get on you like a coach does just as your dad? Oh, like, yeah. Do you ever get kind of that coach's voice? Yeah, I remember in high school, my dad used to grade all my film. He, he, <laughs> he was always a tough grader. He used to always grade all my film. Pretty, like, like I was in college. So, like, I feel like that really helped me, like, to like work on my technique and stuff like that and like take everything serious at the end of the day it's a business and like you have to care, carry yourself as like a professional even though I'm not a professional yet and I want to get to that level but I just have to carry myself like that if I aspire to be one being a coach's son is no joke no. at all especially when he's like your actual coach like he coaches you on the field it is no joke yeah yeah it probably probably sounds like a team meeting every <laughs> once in a while around the dinner table would be my my yeah. guess uh on that uh, so, gentlemen, I mentioned it before. If you listen really closely, you can start to hear the voice of Coach Batson introduce our fourth quarter video. You know, it's time to put the fours up. We're entering the fourth quarter of the season. Uh, what can fans expect to see from you guys individually as you prepare to finish, which has been one of the words of the year this year, uh, this season? A lot more plays like that from Saturday. It's uh, a different mentality. Got that dog mentality. I'm just keep doing everything I could do to help this team win, make as many plays as I can. And if the team need me to do something, I'll do it. You know, we're kind of entering that phase where you're playing your best football, so I, I feel like we're going to start playing some really good games. We're going to start playing complementary football where their offense and the defense are just playing together, special teams making plays. So I'm excited to see what we can do at the end of this uh, this season. I'm really excited. I'm excited how the defense is playing, how you guys are showing up and showing out early and often. Um, and uh, I really appreciate you guys being here. But, Sammy, before we close, I do have to ask you, first episode you appeared on this podcast – you're in a full suit. This one right here, a little bit dressed down. I like the boots. I like the jeans. Uh, I like the look. What'd you get into this morning? I heard you might be out and about hunting this morning too. Yeah, I woke up at uh, 5.30 this morning, went and got in the woods. I was on, I almost wore my camo, honestly, but I figured that'd be a little weird, so I did. Yeah, so it's I just, just a floating head out here. Yeah, out a he actually sent me a picture of his camo outfit saying he was going to wear it, but I, I didn't believe him. <laughs> but like, He sent me a picture of it this morning. Well, you had a matching one that you would come in. Yeah, I, I had a matching one, but he said we weren't going to wear it, so I was like, nah, that's cool. <laughs> I got you. We're going to save it for another time. Did you catch anything? No, I didn't. Uh, well, sometimes it's just about being out it's there. It's just about the being out there and enjoying nature. Well, thank you both, gentlemen, for uh, joining us here today. This has been another episode of the Two Right Turns podcast. I've been the special guest host, Alex Bina, here in Studio C of the Clemson Athletics Branding Institute. Tap in. Tap in. We hope that you all subscribe and keep tapping in for each episode each week.